Hello, everyone, and welcome to another very exciting, energetic, and hopefully not egregiously um, erroneous. Another erroneous, very good episode of Tap Cap Transmissions. Gotcha. My name is Justin, joined as always by my very, very good friend, Mr. Corey from Corey Loses and Corey's Datapad. How are you today, Corey? Uh, I'm good. I learned a lot about love and drug abuse today so I, i'm ready to talk about it and uh see see what we've all come to together okay so today we will be discussing um the weekend Corey and i had in the streets of uh, <laughs> winnipeg <laughs> no uh we will be discussing uh young jedi knights trouble on cloud city book 13 of the series all right really we got one left after this which i am legitimately very sad about yeah um, it's been basically all year we've been talking about this mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been a journey, um, and they've been they've been fun. So before we get into that, though, we do have a couple of announcements. First of all, I did finally well, I didn't complete the thing that I've been saying I'm going to do, but I've got a decent version of the uh, kind of master spreadsheet put together, which I'm using to track not only um, not only our ratings, but every episode we've done so far. So right now, I've got 78 episodes done. Unfortunately, not all of them have ratings. I'd say, what, like 30 of them do, Corey, maybe? Or yeah, I actually, five? I made a list of the ones that didn't have ratings on there. Uh, so we'll probably put a version of the spreadsheet. We'll link it in the notes on the YouTube version and on the audio mm. version. So you guys yeah. will finally be able to see this. Yeah. Uh, but there are a few that are missing. If you happen to remember where in the episode they were and you want to send us an email at tapcaftransmissions at gmail.com with one of the blank spots because you remember that uh, Eck rated uh, Darth Bane Rule of Two uh, an S+. plus. you wanted to send that over in an email to us, we'll, uh, we'll mark that off and we'll try to find it ourselves if not, but there's a lot of uh, hours of the show to go through. Yeah. But it's, it's all coming it together finally. And if you're looking at it too, the way it works is I've broken up into different tabs on the bottom. So like the first tab is the joint tier list. Then we've got my tier list, Corey's. Then we've got the master episode list where like all the actual data is stored. The other ones just sort of read off that list. Um, it, I actually really enjoyed doing it. When I got that filter to work properly to cut out like all of the ones that were non-rated episodes or like that hadn't been completed yet, I like, I had to get a new pair of pants. Yeah, spreadsheets right. are great. Yeah, I I miss them from. I did a lot of spreadsheets in undergrad. Um, I remember I was taking an accounting course once, and I was up to my, like, I was going to my buddy's university and for the weekend, and I had to finish the assignment before we go out drinking and partying and everything. And, like, the kind of shitty thing about accounting is, you, shitty or good, you know immediately once you're done if you're right or wrong, because yeah. one side of the ledger equals the other. I remember I was just like, I wanted to get up so bad that I just end up faking both sides in the same way to make it work. And I end up getting like a, an A minus on the paper. So, yeah. Counting. There you good. go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my big takeaway. We also, do you want to discuss Star Wars Visions a little bit? Just give, I'll, I'll, we can kind of fill in people about that or. Uh, yeah. So our, our plan next week is still to do a full episode on Visions, I believe, because that'll mm -hmm. be after it comes out. Uh, we were able to to watch the episodes, and uh, we can't say too much until I think the 18th, technically. But uh, but yeah, it I was guess fun. the 21st, maybe. Isn't that the day before release? I thought. Uh, is it? Oh, we'd have to look at the thing again. But still, yeah. So way. we're allowed to right now give what they call a um, not social, a reaction, but I, yeah. It was the social, social embargo media. that lifted, not the yeah. uh, not the review embargo. Yeah, so basically, high-level impressions. You just want to give your thoughts, Corey, just, again, high-level impressions. Of course, no spoilers here or anything, guys. Um, and for those who don't know, Star Wars Visions is a, a anime anthology series that's coming out uh, this month. But yeah, high-level thoughts, Corey. Did you finish it, by the way? Or I haven't finished all of them yet. I'm most of the way through. But, uh, but yeah, it's good stuff. You've, been, you've enjoyed Some it so more far? good stuff than other stuff, but I think, like... It's a bunch of different anime styles, so if you like anime, there's almost certainly something in there that you'll really like. Yeah, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, because 
there's almost definitely going to be something you like and something you don't like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I sat down and watched it all at once. I think it comes to about two and a half hours or so. Um, and they're releasing all at once. So I look forward to discussing it next time. I probably will have to give them one more watch, I think, yeah. before we do our big, uh, our big discussion. I like I was trying to watch them all the way through, but then I kept having other stuff I had to do. So I had them on in the background and I'd have to go back and rewatch stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, course. so I'm trying to like only watch them when I can actually pay attention to them. So mm-hmm. I'm a little bit behind everyone now. Okay. Well, I mean, most people haven't even got well, the glimpse upon it yet. That's true. So. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, like, because there are nine episodes by seven animation studios. There's one, and I won't say which one, that I really disliked. Well, not really disliked, that I disliked, that I think a lot of people will like. And there's one that I loved that I'm not sure. I think a lot of people will be as high on, but I can see some people not. But uh, yeah, with that being said, I don't want to get in trouble. And I don't want to get in trouble on Cloud City, although that is the name of the book we are discussing today. Corey, do you want to give us a basic setup of what's going on um, in this in this story? All right, so we've rejoined our young Jedi Knight friends after they've recruited uh, Anya Galandro in the last book, who is... Unbeknownst to them, a Black Sun operative who holds the death of her father against Han Solo. So she's kind of ingratiated herself very poorly into this group by being rude to them repeatedly. And yeah, she's, uh, she's really awful. <laughs> she's thinking she's going to expose these young Jedi Knights for the assholes she thinks they are, and then she'll be able to kill them. That's kind of the plot of these three books. I mean, it's uh, been the plot of every, like, to a degree, that's something that's like. There's always been the outcast. Like, yeah. first it was Zach, then it was, um, what's his name? Or what's her name? Um, Lobaka's girlfriend. Yeah. And now it's Anya. But yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Well, thank you for just uh, undermining the setup of all these Young Jedi Knights books. Almost as if a Young Reader series might have themes about outcasts and not fitting in. Uh, shocking. But More naked centaurs in this one as well. But for this one, we do start off on Yavin 4 with a naked centaur scene. Uh, I then just Lando. The second I saw it. I was like, the man, the man and woman can't help themselves here. Lando <laughs> pops back. up. He's gonna take all the kids on a trip, except for Raynar and Lusa. They're done with them now. They don't want to hang out yeah. with them anymore. Uh, <laughs> Anya is invited though, and Lando and his buddy, uh, they're setting up a a theme park on Cloud City. This is gonna be a fun vacation for everyone. But wouldn't you know it, the Black Sun is getting involved. And they are trying to do something that's not entirely clear, actually. Yeah, so it seems like the Black Sun is trying to just infiltrate, like use the uh, the Empire War corrupt feature on like all of these uh, money making schemes and like funnel more money into their because like the Black Sun at this point has been kind of disbanded. I I don't know if it takes like Shizor's death as like the disbanding point or Yeah, I think it does take like Shadows of the Empire and then this is the mm. rebuilding of it. But uh yeah, Sephiroth so... from Final Fantasy is restarting it. Uh Anya works for him and the story is kind of about Anya realizing that the Black Sun doesn't have her best interests at heart and that maybe the young Jedi Knights aren't that terrible in the first place but we get into a lot of dangerous hijinks. Jason mm-hmm. falls down a hole. Uh, Tenelcar and Lobaka don't fall down that hole. Yeah. Well, they I think it's down, basically they the catch same themselves thing. themselves on the weather vane, basically, yeah. is what I imagined. And uh, Jason does not catch himself on that. He falls much further and lands on a Thronta. So. Yeah. So, I, I, this, I told you before, I think this is actually my favorite one of these books so far. Um... Just because I feel like it really captured like the spirit of adventure of the early ones. Yeah. Um, and I think Cloud City was a really fun location. It's like this book is like so lighthearted. Like they're going they're going to test out an amusement park for Christ's sake. It's like it's epic. Yeah, I I'm with you. It's definitely top three. I don't know if I if I'm willing to commit to a top one spot for it right now. Yeah, it's probably fine. probably Number is. But is, like, yeah, I know how serious a business this is. We have the spreadsheet tracking our rankings. Yeah, we don't rank these books in particular, but I just I think uh, we should just yeah. give it give them an A tier, like them all an A tier at the end. But or maybe just put an entry in for the series. You'd put it all in it as a, a an A tier. That's what you're going yeah. with. Yeah, I think. Are you sure you're not having your perceptions a little bit colored by having just finished 
trouble on Cloud City and having that resonate with you in such a way? Well, I think for me, like for what it does, it's the whole entire series. It does exactly what it's supposed to. Okay. And I I never dreaded reading it. I always enjoyed it. Uh, they never they don't overstay their welcome. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair and, enough. and also for me personally, I'm a little biased because these were probably my introduction into Star Wars Legends. Right. That's fair. Mm-hmm. So we'll mark that down on the spreadsheet. You'll get your check from Kevin J. Anderson in the mail. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> my video, my view's been low, buddy. <laughs> well, you should have done a video about each of these books, but uh kind of did. You did the storehouse video. I was like mm-hmm. about to start my script on that. Saw your video came out. And get like, get oh, absolutely I'm not, fucked. I'm not going to bother now. <laughs> I should have still done it because then it's like, yeah. oh, the, your video is just going to redirect traffic to mine. No yeah, one's going to say, I've already watched a video on the Emperor's Storehouse. I'm just going to, like, they're, yeah. they're all going to come. There's back already to like, there's like 10 people who are interested, and those 10 people are almost certainly interested enough to watch two videos about it. Well, I just mean I'm going to show up in your suggested videos there. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone who watches that video on your channel is going to go and watch it on mine. And yeah. that's, that'll be really how I hit my, my YouTube stride is just basking in your reflected glory. My you know, career like plan. One of those, uh, what are those things that attach to sharks called? Remoras? Remor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cory Remora. I'm a parasite. Be... Yeah. I like it. Well, no, it's because it's not a parasitic relation. Isn't it a uh, mutually beneficial relationship? Yeah. yeah. That one. Uh, there's, there's actually you an episode be... of Magic School Bus about this, which uh, I know, I remember. That you can watch that while you're reading a Young Jedi Knights book, and it really just takes you back. Oh, right back to 97. If you want to be a parasite, you can be like Cory Ringworm or something. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Today's <laughs> podcast sponsored by Ivermectin. <laughs> there are only a few YouTubers who cause this much anal itching. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> only, only a few Star Wars YouTubers, that is. <laughs> Corey's up there among the best. <laughs> hey, thanks, I think. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. All right. So while it is lighthearted, we actually we get more of Anya's spice addiction in this book. Mm. and none of the kids have picked up on this so far. And yeah, Lando's like, oh, yeah, you minutes. know your friend's addicted to spice. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, she's twitchy. She's, our pupils are fucked. It's like, it's kind of, I just like imagine like she's just like tweaking like throughout like the whole book and the kids just don't notice. Like she's like just like shaking and it's just like the kids. Have you ever noticed how you can see through her skin? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever noticed she almost fell off a tree, kids? Like... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like her whole thing about uh, ingratiating herself into the group so she can expose them as the assholes they are. She's like, she's like prodding them, waiting for them to blow up so she can be like, I knew it. And then she can justify to herself the fact that she's going to kill these other kids. But mm-hmm. they're just too polite. They're not going to fall yeah. for it. There's yeah, a lot of jealousy yeah. going on in this book, though, because yeah. Jason and Zek are really paying a lot of attention to Anya. And yeah. Tenelka and Jaina are not liking that. That's most of their characteristic in this book is just jealousy. I will say, though, that it did remind me of my younger days. I mean, like when Jaina is like, or Tenelka is looking over and it's like the the guy she likes is like, he's not infatuated with Anya, but he's spending a lot of time with her. I was like, I mm-hmm. can remember what that's like as a teenager. And like, she's talking about it, like her stomach. Like, oh, she's like, she feels sick. I'm like, OK, like, yeah, that it do be like that. <laughs> Kevin J. Anderson. It do be like that. <laughs> but we have. Uh, they they don't seem to be very good as a group at any of the investigation work that they need to do as Jedi because they're out here. Lando's business partner has jumped off of a catwalk. Everyone's saying it's suicide, but Lando thinks there's something else up. Man, in the prime of his life just got his shit together. It's not suicide. Yeah, so they're all investigating that, but the investigative skills of the Young Jedi Knights are absolute shit. This is something they're really going to need to work on if they want to be real Jedi. Yeah, um, this is like (laughs) Jason literally falls out of the sky into the answer (laughs) that they're looking for. Yeah, Um, like he gets caught by the Thronta being ridden by someone. He's like, yeah, people keep falling from up there. I don't know what's going on. It's it's kind of shitty, but 
couldn't catch the last guy. Good thing I was here today. Did you think at that point when Jason falls down that he's going to be like, oh, yeah, he's just over there? Uh, no, I thought it was definitely setting him up to use the force on a like a wild creature and become like a rider. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't think he was going to be rescued by one of the riders. I thought he was going to use the force and yell, like, get a, a Theranta to help him. But, but instead he gets a Theranta being ridden by someone else to help him. But I, I was expecting, like, they'd go to that algae cloud that floats up through Bespin's atmosphere, and Jason would get off, and, like, Cohen is just right there, like, oh, yeah, I haven't gone back yet, but... Uh... <laughs> it's like in, uh, you ever play, like, Super Mario 3? Yeah. It's like when you go above the level sometimes and there's just like those clouds that you can sit on. It's like just like that. He's just been chilling there the whole time. Yeah, makes sense. That, that would have been a more pleasant outcome for him, at least. Because yeah, he, he is dead. Yeah, no, he's he's 100 percent dead. That's he, he might actually still be falling, but it was like six days ago. So he's at least starved to death. So when we'd see like uh, what are those? Are they Beldons, the big uh, gas ones? You know what I mean? Um, Like the big... Do you ever have that book? It was like the Star Wars Wildlife Guide. And it had like all the... Mm -hmm. It was such a cool book, but... I forget what they're called. They're also... They're like, like, like these big gas creatures that are in... Um, they're in Battlefront 2 as well. I think they're, they're in like, uh, the Jedi Academy trilogy, aren't they? When Luke goes to get Strain. Oh, yeah. Probably. Probably, yeah. But they're cool. I was kind of hoping to see them, but... Yeah, I remember I actually read the... Because like a lot of that stuff comes from one of the old source books. Um, yeah. Because it was all about, um, I forget what it's called. It was like Bespin, and it covers like Bespin, Hoth, through the other planets. But it has a lot of cool kind of lore about that 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 um, never really got changed. Like, I don't even think, do they even say the name Bespin in the movie? I don't think so. I think it's just Cloud City, if they ever say it or refer yeah. to it. Yeah. So, yeah, one of those old source books has a lot of information. Like, I think all the creatures that were invented... Uh, or all the creatures that are featured in this probably came from there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those all the, the was... RPG source books had such an impact on everything mm -hmm. that was written after. It was like the one thing that uh, Lucasfilm was like, yeah, you go go read this and then do what it says. Even yeah. Timothy Zahn listened to them. Yeah, I did a video about the uh, Ubiquitrate the other day. And mm -hmm. that was one thing that I was kind of surprised. Because I figured, I remember the Ubiquitrate comes up, and we talked about this a little bit, it comes up in the Thrawn trilogy, and then a little bit in uh, the duology as well, but besides that, the Ubiquitrate's never really mentioned. Yeah. For those who, who don't know, it's basically just like another arm of Imperial Intelligence. So like, I'm, I kind of want to give them all like a big read-through and see what else has kind of not been mined, because there's certainly a lot of really good yeah. stuff there. Yeah. The Ubiquitrate, Ukio has an Ubiquitrate base, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the fight at the end of the duology at Yaga Minor, that's over in a bigger yeah. base as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's all. Is it like Cobnor comes it... from it? Or. It's over Sky, or... Over Sky, not, not Yukio. Yeah. Oh. Over Sky, yeah. Oh, wait, is it Over Sky or do they use the Ubiquitrate to find. I, anyway. Because isn't that where Thrawn's raid at the beginning of the book? At, is that at Over Sky? Yeah. Where he fights, where he does the. Yeah, that's at a bros guy. Yeah. Okay. So isn't he like raiding an Ubiquitrate base there? Yeah, to find Wayland, isn't it? Yeah, because he's still looking for all the tech that they lost. Mm -hmm. But anyways, young Jedi Knights need to fork on their investigation skills if they're going to get anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. they're oblivious to the fact that she's on Spice. They don't know where to look or who to talk to for anything. I don't think they've actually asked anyone any questions at any point until Jason literally falls into the answer. And ask the... He's also blatantly not a Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But, yeah, like, I, I thought that was kind of funny. She's, like, they're hanging out at Luke's uh, Proxium, and Luke's like, you know she's not really a Jedi, right? Like, she can't even lift a rock yet, loser. <laughs> she's kind of a jerk, and she has no force potential. Yeah. yeah but I like um, showing off to her. <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of cute. Um... <laughs> Like, they're talking about, um, and yeah, she's just really abrasive, too. Like, at one point, she's like, if Alderaan's so great, why isn't it still here? Yeah. It's like, come on. <laughs> That's not really what she says, but she's like, it was oh, like, uh, if the Alderaan Death Star should have had guns. Yeah, like, the Death Star wasn't so great. Luke blew it up. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, like Luke says, uh, she's got no force potential and she's a terrible person, mm-hmm. kind of dark. I'd kick around <laughs> if it was up to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just like you're spending time with her instead of Rainer, who like he's right there, like his dad is just dead. died. Yeah, like he 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 didn't get out of there at the end. They find him, but he dies. It's like take Rainer with you. Maybe he's just like he spent all his time with his uh, centaur honey, though. So they like leave Rainer alone. Like he's he'll be happier. Well, you'd think like if Lando wants more data on how enjoyable his rides are, a centaur is a, a focus That's group true. they haven't tapped yet. That's true. Like, um. I guess it would not what would it be like uh what would the disability laws be in like Cloud City? It'd be like the <laughs> the ACA. That's what I was trying to th- yeah. <laughs> the Affordable Care Act. Y- yeah, so it's like Okay, these this slide works for a human, but like what about a hut? Or like what about a being that doesn't have like a physical body? Like what about those sill, the little energy crystals? Are they going to enjoy the Cloud City experience? We have to just assume that they're, uh, they are Star Wars ADA compliant. Mm-hmm. And they, they've got all these different groups that'll work for whomever. So the Aliens with Disabilities Act. Sure. But then who's the aliens? Alien with respect Every- to what? Everybody's not humans, obviously. But then the aliens would think that the humans are the aliens. Well, it's because the non-humans have no rights, really, is where it comes yeah. from. Yeah. There was there was some comment when we were doing the Diversity Alliance arc, like calling me out for saying non-humans instead of aliens. And I was saying it for the purposes of like clarifying which group I was talking about. Mm-hmm. But apparently people got oh, very yeah. mad at me for not like, just call them aliens, they're aliens. That's not like that's not what I was half doing. This book is about like yeah, half the book is about like the aliens see humans as like yeah. So there's one time. To, so the aliens you know, called the humans aliens. So I was trying to clarify that I was talking exactly. about aliens from the perspective of humans. Exactly. Yeah, you're resetting the tone. No, I listen. I appreciate that. Have, have there been any other really good? Um, I'm just trying to think of like any other complaints we've had recently. Uh, I don't think so. Well, there there were a lot of people who were very upset that a lot of the episodes that we've done about Young Jedi Knights, we didn't really talk that much about the books. But there were mm-hmm. a few, especially in the Diversity Alliance arc and like towards the end of the pre the previous arc, where nothing worth talking about happened. Yeah. What did you think about how they characterized Ugnaughts in this book? Because they're like they basically give the description that Ugnaughts were brought over sort of as slave labor. Yeah, um, and, and then helped build Cloud City, and now they're like everywhere from like mechanics all the way up to government. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I've never really seen a, I've never really seen a high rising Ugnot before. But well, one climbed up stuff, and that was pretty high rising. That's true. Well, socially high rising. Like, they're in a the, lot of managerial positions and other stuff. Who's aren't the Jay they? Gatsby of Ugnots? Probably the guy who got fired at the start of this book. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um. I don't know. It makes it sound like there's no Ugnaughts anywhere else is kind of the, or like mm-hmm. the, this is the main group of Ugnaughts. So yeah. I don't know. Which kind of reminds you of something else from this book. So one of the big plot points is that they're trying to find what happened, of course, to the man who, who was killed. And who would have guessed there's a band that knows it. And that band is figuring Dan in the modal nodes or figuring Don in the modal nodes from the cantina in episode four. And this is another case of what you see on screen is what you get because not only is are they a band, but all Bith are band. Like they're all musicians. Yeah. And they visit they visit their home world uh, in this book, and it's well, it's been like burnt to shit by like bioweapons and stuff. And it's kind of funny to think about this really musical species that like just immediately whips out the bioweapons whenever shit gets like a little testy. Yeah. It's like yeah, I was half over, expecting. Like, a, American sure. Idol competition or something. <laughs> I was half expecting with the description of like, oh yeah, all Bith are musical. We're going to go to their world, Clackdoor. Like, mm-hmm. oh, is it going to be like in Big with that piano on the floor everywhere? It's like, no, it's actually an Armageddon scape. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 
Well, it's kind of funny too because it's it made me think of like Louisiana. So it's like this, like the like the because the partially because they describe it as the bayou um, mm-hmm. a lot. Um, so like, I don't know if that was on purpose, but yeah. The bit I like to kept saying yeah. like it was like a hippie bit almost. Yeah. Well, that was wasn't that supposed to be Figure and Dan? Yeah. Yeah. I just like imagine they're so mad because um. How oh, was the name of the guy who? Oh, Ryan. No, not not Ryan Malcolm. The other one on Canadian Idol, the one who who came second in season one. Do you remember that? I I'm for. I only know how one person placed in Canadian Idol, and they didn't make the show because it's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, oh, Gary Beals. He's from Dartmouth. How did I forget his name? Um, but yeah, I just like to imagine that that's like what caused the massive like bio war is like. I thought you were one... talking about Ben Balroni at first. <laughs> no. One element of Bith society just outvoted the others and brought their Bith idol uh, winner. And just like, <laughs> ever since then, it was just been like unmitigated fury. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to imagine. Well, they find out on Black Door. So the, the party does split, which everyone who plays D&D knows that you don't do that because it just makes the game kind of slow for the people that aren't in the group that's being talked to at that point. Yeah. Uh, and also you might die or something. But Lando takes Jaina and Zek over to Clackdoor to talk to Frigrin Dan. And Dan's like, oh yeah, there's uh, there's some Black Sun stuff going on. So they fly back to Bespin. And like that literally all... everybody knows other than them. Yeah, well, luckily they get back at the same moment that Jason is coming back from having fallen down through the hole. Mm -hmm. And this is a a very important moment for both Anya and Tenelka, because this is when Tenelka realizes she feels physically ill. Uh, And when Anya realizes that, hey, maybe I don't want him to die, because he also kind of just saved my life when I almost fell off a tree. And none of us listened to Lobaka about, hey, maybe we should practice proper tree safety. And if I'm going to listen to anyone about tree safety, it's going to be a Wookiee. So, yeah. And the tree, the, I think it describes them as being 50 meters up in the air, which is like really, really high. Like, that's yeah. a tall building. Like, that's a very tall building. Yeah. Anya was going to die. She was like bouncing up and down on this tree limb while they're talking. And then Jason's like, you know what I'm going to do? That. And he stops. When he's using people... the force. Yeah. Yeah, he's using the forest. She's kind of just like doing drug addict things and like she almost falls off. She's saved and then she's like, I wasn't there when he needed me. It's like, I kind of wish he wasn't dead now. And that did seem to be a turning point. I think yeah. like, she'll probably stop doing evil shit from this point on. Yeah. yeah. I thought there was going to be more of a Jason and Tenel Ka moment when he came back. But mm. uh, there's just more Jason, my friend. And well, they're done. they hold hands at the end, which, yeah. I don't know, pretty good. Well, they've only got one more book to set up their relationship, which isn't, uh, gets replaced by Danny Kui and NJO, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're near the end. Uh, we've got a visit to the Crystal Reef next book. Um, it's going to be sad. Like I Not said, a visit, almost... a crisis at the Crystal Reef. Not just yeah. a visit. Let's not downplay the seriousness of their situation there. Crisis seems a lot worse than trouble as well. Like yeah. Just They're really ramping the it up. Yeah. 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 So, like, if they ever do a sequel, it's go- sequel, it's going to be probably a catastrophe. Yeah. yeah. Catastrophe at uh, Encore at Dawn. Deck. Okay. Okay. Well, the last book, it was what? Like, Minor Inconvenience at Ord Mantell? So, <laughs> makes sense. I do have the, one the major... all right day at Ord Mantel. <laughs> I do have one complaint about this book mm-hmm. that uh, I think it's important that we get this out because like, we don't want to just give a rose tinted glasses view of Young Jedi Knights. Uh, the end of it, I read it twice. I read the last 10% of this book twice. Still not sure how it exactly resolved other than a line about like, oh, maybe let's call the New Republic police in to deal with the fact that there's black sun activity here 
Mm-hmm. It's like they're in the middle of flying around and Lando was like, well, better get you back to Yavin. Then they're back on Yavin. And I was like, wait, what did I miss here? But I don't think I missed anything. I think they just. just yeah, kind of clear out like... some security that are sympathetic to the Black Sun and then they're just gone. It's not the first time they've done that. Um, I feel like they kind of did that during the. Uh, during the Diversity Alliance arc a couple of times or like. Yeah there's like this is clearly not the end and but they fully don't resolve it like the episode or the book where um Raynar's father gets or it's his uncle gets they think he's kidnapped i kind of remember that one being sort of like that yeah. but yeah it ends with them kind of discovering that there is this big infiltration of black sun agents throughout all of cloud city and apparently other places and we don't really hear them get getting rooted out we just know that Leia's going to try to get involved and she's chief of state so hopefully she can help but yeah we don't actually know what she's going to do so yeah we just kind of get the implication that this problem is now known about something will happen but then they just they go back to Yavin uh all the young Jedi are friends again uh Jason and Zach are going to hang out with their actual friends and not just hang around with Anya they invite Anya to come out to the forest and explore with them. And Jason's like, even though I know you're useless, Anya, you want to, you want to still come hang out yeah, with us? Yeah, that was kind of super rude. He's, he's like, hey, I know uh, Uncle Luke says you're a piece of shit, but like, do you want to come hang out or? <laughs> still hang out with you. Mm-hmm. He's like, I, I, know I, sh- I know I shouldn't hang out with you, but I can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing better going on. Yeah, that was not a... Jason lacks tact. Oh, which reminds me, we do also get um, Tenelka and the droid getting in on one of Jason's jokes when they're on the tree. Yeah, all of them, uh, all of them get in on it. Anya does, Tenelka does. Oh, yeah, even on, yeah. Because Jason makes a, a tree pun, then MTD's talking about uh, we should leaf. Mm-hmm. Tenelka says that would be a good idea. Getting to the root of the problem, someone says, I think. It'd be a vine thing to do. Oh, yeah. They just, uh, they really just, they're coming thick and fast. Which, to be fair, the Vine thing to do, that could have just been, ordinarily, we could think that's just because we're reading the weird ebook version of these that's, like, just scanned and messed up. Um, I'll, like, I'll assume it's another tree pun. Yeah. Like, the the books almost always say, come they come very close to saying anus, like, almost every book. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I only picked up was... on it last time, but... This time it was good. It was, hold on, I think I got it open. It's like when um, the Cloud Rider was coming to save them or whatever. Not actually the Cloud Rider, but when the guy was coming to save them and it's like, it says he wrapped his his lasso around his arms, but it's it's, it's pretty much always funny because arms is the, uh, arms is the word that usually yeah. it's yeah meant to be, but. Because last time it was Zach crossing his anus on his chest. <laughs> See if I can find it. Yeah. ANNS. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Every time I open um my e reader on my book, uh G Force now starts and it's like I'm ready to record any fucking <laughs> green shots if you want. Like now, you I'm gotta like, power up the GPU if you want to read an ebook. Yeah, like I'm good. New font rendering technologies. These vector <laughs> graphics have never looked so good. We can render two pages at once if you want. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much... I, I can't find it, but you'll just have to trust me when I say it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah. So, anything else you want to mention about this book, Mr. Corey? Uh, do we want to talk about Lando's business acumen here? How he's doing something nice for the people and not just making money for the sake of it. He wants to bring fun and games to a galaxy that needs it. And then it's never heard from again. You know. It kind of reminds me of, so I was looking and because at one point he mentions like an old amusement park that he had wanted to buy. And that apparently is actually from Jedi Prince, which I didn't realize. But there's also another amusement park they go to in the, I think it's the Marvel comics. Yeah, it's it's either the Marvel comics or the newspaper dailies. I think it's called Dreamland. Um, But yeah, I I thought for a second it was a reference to that and it's not. um, But. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought, you know, he's had more, 
you know, he's had more ridiculous um, yeah. ideas. But yeah, I thought it was interesting. He's a very likable character in this book. Um, from cutting through to the drug addiction to um, to actually wanting to help. And he seems, he seems to actually be pretty sad about... Cohen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hold I do hope Jaina has point. a bit more of a role in the next book because it's the last one. And she's kind of been sidelined a little mm-hmm. in the last probably two or three. Because mm-hmm. uh, she had a lot to do early on in the Divers- Diversity Alliance arc with uh, her being kind of like the closest to Loi. And before that with Zek stuff, she was always pretty front and center. But uh, it'd be nice to give her a bit more more to do in the uh, in the final book of the series. So that's what I'm hoping for. Any big hopes yeah. for you coming into Crisis well, at Crystal I, Reef? I just hope, I mean, I, I think they knew this was going to be the last book, so I just hope we get it summed up well. Like, I yeah. want to like, I want to be sad and nostalgic at the end of the book. Like, better end with, like, all the people hanging out, you know, going on an adventure on Yavin or something like that. But yeah, I would like to see, I, I hadn't thought about that, but even Jason, not to the same extent, but yeah, Jane has definitely been kind of sidelined a little bit. And it is partially because they usually they've been introducing new characters kind of mm-hmm. into the group, whether it's Zach or whether it's uh, Lobaka's girlfriend or Anya now. Um, so the main characters have kind of taken a bit of a, a bit of a, um, a, a less important role, but hopefully we see kind of the original four, uh, yeah. uh, Jason, Jaina, Loi, and Tenel Ka really kind of focused in at least at the end of next book. But hopefully we get lots of stuff, and ho- hopefully we see some, uh, some a little bit more character development too. Like they should be different by the end of yeah. the next book. So. Yeah, like Anya is obviously still going to be a focus because it's resolving the whole Black Sun arc. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, th- there was a lot in this book of just scenes with Anya thinking about, oh, do I like them or not, and mm-hmm. so she'll probably decide she does like them by the end of next book uh well she's kind of there already but i'm hoping there's a bit less in her head and a bit more with the other characters dealing with her once they find out her situation but yeah so yeah that'll be that'll be it for young jedi knights in a couple weeks i'm not sure when exactly we're going to be talking about it yeah i'd say it'll either be two weeks or three um because yeah next week we have uh visions visions and then I'm not sure if we're going to do Black Fleet or this, but we'll let you guys know. Yeah, we'll either be doing this Black Fleet or Ronin comes out soon after as well. So we got to figure yes, that out, too. Mm-hmm. And just a reminder as well, we're still going to do questions today, but yeah. make sure that you guys um, check out the uh, the spreadsheet in the episode description if you're listening or watching on YouTube. And also make sure that you leave us a nice review and ask us any emails. Um, we're gonna. I think we've got about we've got quite a few today, considering yeah. the Young Jedi Knights episode. So that's nice. Uh, but yeah, especially about visions. Like maybe beforehand, let us know like what your most, which visions episode you think because you obviously haven't seen them yet. Which episode you think you'll like the most? If you're kind of excited about this series and just generally your thoughts on non-canon uh, Star Wars stuff. Yeah, and well, there was something else we were gonna we were talking about doing. We did. Probably a year ago now, we did an episode, or probably over a year ago now, oh, we yeah, did an episode yeah. where we went back over our book rankings and kind of reshuffled them. Uh, it was like episode 26. Yeah. So we were talking, now that we have the spreadsheet, about going back and doing another re-ranking episode, kind of reviewing where stuff stands so far, and uh, at least like re-normalizing the curve, because yeah. we Just are very the generous. Words. There are only four reviews between the two of us that have gone below a C uh, where there's three D's and one F uh, and if we don't want to we're not here to say like any Star Wars book sucks or anything like we're probably going to enjoy all of them to some extent but part of the thing with the rankings is just like how all the books are relative to each other so having a bit yeah. bigger of a distribution between the if if we just rank everything as like A and S tier, that probably means we're not doing yeah. the best ranking system. So we're going to do another episode where we go through that. And we were thinking for that, 
we would put out a kind of survey uh, using Google Forms or something and get everyone to submit their rankings of if they've read the books that we've covered so far uh, mm -hmm. or maybe some extra trivia people might have or thoughts people might have and do another show kind of reviewing everything we've covered so far on the podcast as we get into the last parts of the pre-NJO period. Yeah. It's funny, I, like, because when I immediately looked at my list, I was thinking of there were a few that I would, would probably put higher. Um, like, I think for me, the most egregious one is I put X-Wing Rogue Squadron at a B, mm -hmm. and I think that probably deserves an A. I just re-listened to it on audiobook, and I think that probably deserves an A. Similarly, I put... Um, see, that one's hard. Like, Alphabet Squadron I have at a, at a B as well, but... I don't know if it's my, my how much I really enjoyed the later two that would push that up, but mm -hmm. yeah, for ones that are too high, just looking at my list, I think, hmm, I could see myself moving the Han Solo books down to a. Yeah, probably. I think I might move them down. The way we have it in the spreadsheet, by the way, guys, if you, if just for when you guys are looking at it, just so it'd be more easy to uh, put it in order, we have it from six to one, with a six being an S and a one being an F. Um, that was one that I felt was kind of high. Um, Jedi Academy, Jedi Search may have been a bit high. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking. Yeah. Yeah. I like, forget like... what I did with uh, Children of the Jedi and Crystal Star. I think like I yeah, went into those books good. expecting to really dislike them and then kind of enjoyed them. And I think I ended up giving them like a B or something when I'd yeah. probably drop that a little bit because like they're not bad. But when you like compare them to other stuff that's kind of in that tier yeah. uh, where even like I Sarge Revenge is kind of in there with them. And I think I Sarge Revenge is better than them. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, that put that like. That's why it's kind of helpful when you do this, because it puts it into perspective. And we were talking about this off air, too. We are going to always keep our original rankings mm -hmm. um, just for posterity. But I do think it makes sense to kind of contextualize things as we move along. Um, I will notice, too, when I was doing the list, I put uh, I, I tracked our averages and our differences. And so far, we do not differ very much on our ratings. Um, yeah, is the is one the biggest difference there? Yeah, I think yeah. I think there's one of the later ones that we did disagree on a bit more. Maybe like one of the Bane books or something, because I really disliked those. Uh, well, oh, I, maybe I did one too, of the but... Thrawn Ascendancy books, maybe. Yeah, I think we were pretty different on the second uh, one, Greater think. Good, and we might have been pretty different on uh, Rising Storm. Where I think I liked both of those significantly yeah. more than you did. Not like three tiers worth, but probably two tiers. Which reminds me, Lesser Evil comes out fairly soon. Yeah. In October, November. isn't it? Is it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe it is October. Maybe it is October. Let me just see. Uh, November 16th, yeah. Okay. And we actually, we got the ti or, yeah, title and cover reveals, I think, for the next phase of High Republic as well. Mm -hmm. So that's all yeah, going to be can... starting soon, too. Yeah. One of those, one of the hard, one of the High Republic books. Everyone's kind of talking about how the the faces. Did you see that? Um, I forget which book it is, but did you ever see like when they were doing the Legacy comics? They had like some of those weird like CG um, faces. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's one that it's it's weird because it's not CG. It's like it almost looks like claim. It's very weird. Um, it's for it's for the cover of Fallen Star. Um, let me see. High Republic, Fallen Star. Yeah, there's just something about the the cover that's a little a little weird, but I mean, it's still not bad. But yeah, yeah it should I, be, I uh, don't know. I like it. it. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Um, is that um, Avar at the or not Avar? Sorry, um, Elzar. In, you think in the front I think there? Elzar Man is the one to the right there, with the, yeah. With the beard, yeah. And the cross card lightsaber. Yeah. And then the one next to him is the she's like the she's like the mercenary, isn't she? Like from last No, I book? don't think I don't think that's the mercenary. I always forget yeah. the characters. Uh well I 
I know who Yaga is in the background there, but and the guy next to him and is Bell. the uh, Bell, and then the one next to him is the one from the book we just read because she's completely white, right? With the double saber, yeah, yeah. What's her name again? We just read about her. And... I don't remember their names when I'm not reading the books. But yeah, what's her species again? She's like she's like the handmaid or the from Kodor two. Remember? Uh, um. Anyway, yeah, Atris. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But we so we look at this. We know where they're from. <laughs> the names besides Elzar. There's just so kind of, many of them. Yeah, there's way too many of them. Um, well, I'm I'm able to keep track of it when I'm reading them now, but it's just yes. When I'm not, it's uh, Arcanian. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So that's we're gonna try funny, to slot yeah. that in. Uh, the kind of recap episode pretty soon. Next week is going to be Visions. The week after that will either be Young Jedi Knights, Ronin, or uh, or Tyrant's Test. So we'll be finishing something off either way. Because Visions only has the one novel. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. So we'll get into some email questions now, because we do have a few. Got that pulled up here. So the first one goes from Neil. He says, hey, guys, a long time, no email. <laughs> I, um, I guess that's like a first time or a long time, first time thing. Um, I have been keeping up with the show, though. And when I found out you guys are doing the Black Fleet Christ, I had to drop a line. I've heard a few people say that there seems to be like. Well, some, Neil uh, used to email a lot. So I think this is just it's been a while since his email. Not that he's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, regardless, though, I've, I've seen a lot of people who are like have love for the. Black Fleet Chrysler, which makes sense because it does, um, it is a very different type of book. So I can see mm -hmm. why there'd be like a certain group of fans who really like it. But he says, I've been keeping up with the show. Uh, and when I found out you guys were doing the Black Fleet Chrysler, I had to drop a line. The series checked all the boxes of early U EU for me. Some threats to the new trilogy, characters from the OT, and everything was nicely wrapped up without alluding, affecting or alluding too much else. Uh, also a bit of nostalgia. I read those books, not because of an internet form or recommendation, because they happen to be on the shelf of my local bookstore. That's the same with me and these books. Um, I'm not saying it's the best series far from it, but when nostalgia enters the equation, it is easy to look past the shortfalls, and there are a few. Keep up the good work, and I'll keep following. I think that's fair. I mean, I don't have that much nostalgia for the Black Fleet. I would say I've got almost none, and I've been enjoying it, so... yeah. Yeah, I think one of the the kind of the flip side of the uh, equation there is that uh, the fact that it doesn't end up affecting much of the EU after it is one of the things that's kind of pointed to as a flaw with it. Or not really a flaw with it when you're reading it, but one of the things that's like kind of disappointing about uh, yeah. just the universe in general. Like we have all these new ship classes, and then when you get to the NJO, which is the next major thing to happen after it, uh, there's nary a nebula in sight. So I know that's something that's close to your heart, Justin, but I think I like the endurance more than the nebula. Do they show up in the hand of Thrawn duology? Cause I think there's some of the new class stuff. that's like mm. the diamolins have like Maybe. each I'm of the sides sure. have. I've got no clue. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Uh, if you had a choice, would you prefer listeners stream the YouTube or download the podcast? Uh, whatever's easiest, really. Yeah, we don't. Mind I don't know, podcast way. maybe, but I I kind of want to do an effort to get more people actually listening to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially like I would prefer to just record on Twitch or something like we're doing today. Um, just because YouTube doesn't really like live streams that much. Um, unlike channels that don't live stream. That's yeah, pretty, but... it's very different from the rest of our content, and it can make it hard, especially for uh. Like on my side, it ends up being a much bigger proportion of my content on Datapad because we do one episode per week and I'm usually only doing one or two videos on that channel per week. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. we're trying to figure out like what we want to do or what we can do to kind of make Tapcalf stand out a bit more. Plus we've put so many books out, or so many episodes out, we've covered a lot. So I just yeah. want to... We've talked about getting. I really need to get some art and done and some music. Maybe I. I wish we could hire a, like an editor to really do a good job on the episodes, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, but first we need to do a really good job on the episodes, and yeah, not looking likely. <laughs> uh, yeah. So our next question comes from Joel. 
who says, Today I bring thoughts and those thoughts on the major reasons why I don't like the Legends post and or era and prefer the canon one on the whole. Basically, my dislike of the post and or era in Legends comes mainly from what they did post NJO in the Legacy comics. I really dislike how things got so cynical and dark. I'm not even against Jason becoming a Sith Lord so much as I'm against Jaina marrying a fascist and becoming an Empress. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the Empire coming back with peace talks like a real defeat, even things like Dala taking over to seem wrong to me. I know you can make the same argument in canon, but at least the First Order took over militarily and not because of popular will. Also, right now, it seems to be returning back to the light, and unless Rey decides to go to her grandpa's business, Chi, Poe, Rose, and Finn are making a lot more moral good guy decisions for how they want to shape the future of the galaxy. Keeping that hope which Star Wars is, alive, is known for alive. Sure, I understand the lack of originality, but tonally, I think post Endor and canon six what I like in Star Wars a lot more than what Legends ended up being. Those are my thoughts. Do you think I'm right, wrong, or just a personal taste issue? just wrong no i'm just kidding um i think Corey and i have both kind of talked about our problems with legacy especially like the legacy yeah. comics where i personally don't like very much about legacy i don't like the story they went with i find it's i don't like the idea of the sith imperial war i think it's far too convoluted um i don't like the how the universe has developed i don't like the, the way they do the time jump i like the ships but that's pretty much it um, but I, I really like Legacy of the Force and Fate of the Jedi, so especially because they're just so different. But so that's yeah. that is just a personal thing. Like, uh, I like them as series for what for like the individual stories they tell, but when you look at it from like a bird's eye view of how the universe is going, uh, which it does play into the stories specifically, but uh, but yeah, there there are a few elements of it like just going straight back to the Imperials kind of being in charge and mm -hmm. just seeming like some of the stories are just existing to tell the story and like set up whatever the next conflict's going to be rather yeah. than having anything ever really get fixed or addressed. Like at least they use on Vong. It was an exterior threat. They were mm -hmm. moving past things that they'd already solved to fight this new thing. And I don't necessarily think that every threat has to like ramp things up. Otherwise you get supernatural and you end and up having to fight God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Supernatural is just live action Dragon Ball Z. Um, <laughs> it 100% true. You can quote me on that. But, uh, like, yeah, the, my biggest issues tend to be like Dala getting voted in, but it's not like the most surprising thing either. Cause like 30 years of war again, like, oh, let's get the, let's get the military people back in charge. They yeah, had Admiral. good forces and stuff, more arming yeah. things. Especially because a lot of those conflicts come down to uh, the Corellian crisis comes down to like uh, regional power versus is the federal government going to be able to tell them to have their their navy or not? <laughs> Which yeah. it's it's really cutting to the core of episode one and seeing the things that people really liked in that, which is like the trade disputes, uh, the devolution of powers. Those are what people are coming to Star Wars for. And the fact that we didn't actually get more of a focus on that in the text of Legacy of the Force and instead have to go to Essential Guide to Warfare if you really want to break that down even a little bit. Uh, I, I think a that's a in the first couple of books, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That it is kind of weird because the first books do kind of focus more on that, like the first book especially. But then I guess you kind of get lost in like the the plot. Yeah, so if we could just have the the arms restrictions on, like, we can have the text of the laws that re are restricting Corellia from building their own fleet, then I think people would be a lot more positive on... I didn't know every, every judge who was present for the uh, judicial challenge, constitutional challenge of that law. I need their full backstory. So does the Galactic uh, Alliance have a have a Supreme Court? They must. I mean, the Republic had one, so you'd think... You'd hope that yeah, cause I read something about like how um, Mon Mothma considered calling the Alliance, the Republican exile, basically the idea that they were just the, the deposed government. government. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of what they go for. So I would assume they try to emulate as many like government institutions as they can, but you don't really hear much about the uh, court, even the Republic court. You don't hear very much about. Well, we know the, the courts are in Palpatine's control, and that's mm -hmm. about it. I remember there was a bit in the one of the new Thrawn books, uh, with, with like when Governor Price is on Coruscant, we learn a bit about the court, but 
kind of a random memory I have. Um, the next question we have is from Brayden, who says, I, uh, Hey, Ek and Corey, I got an interesting thought I want your opinion on. Uh, so, the other, so the other day I was in the shower. Good start. Uh, and a what if came to mind. What if Anakin let Mace Windu arrest Sheev? Would Anakin still try and learn from him? Uh, if you think he does, how would he go about doing this? Or would Palpatine say, screw this and kill Anakin and Mace before they arrest him? I don't think there's a situation where Palpatine lets himself get arrested unless he knows he can get out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Palpatine can beat Anakin no, in I that don't moment. So no. I don't think anyone can really beat An. Well, I guess I guess Obi-Wan does, but that's kind of different. That was like the perfect situation. Yeah, like in a situation where Anakin sides with Mace and both of them are there, he doesn't cut Mace's arm off. I don't think you can beat the Anakin Mace tag team that we've all been no. looking for for so long. Uh, I think Palpatine is just so confident in what he's doing. And I, I don't think he really had a plan B in that situation. Uh, if no. he gets arrested and Anakin does convince mace not to kill him on the spot i think he'd probably like i i don't know that he ends up i don't think, I don't think he can to convince learn mace windu not to kill him on the spot yeah yeah you do see mace think about it in the movie but like based on like the book like what you read about like mace's internal monologue i don't think yeah like as much as palpatine was sure he wasn't gonna lose that situation or wasn't really betting on a plan B if Anakin sided against him there. I don't think Mace had a plan for letting Palpatine leave that room either. Yeah. So, yeah, no. I think it's, it's a I difficult. Do, I one. do think if it comes down to it, like, like if if it were if Anakin walks in on a neutral situation and he sees Mace and Palpatine squaring off, I think he's going to take Palpatine's side every time just because he's been manipulated so much. Yeah, even without like because. There's always the discussion of, oh, did Palpatine just appear to be weak? Um, and when I, I'm not going to lie. When I first watched the movie and as a kid, I thought Palpatine did throw the fight. But it seems like that's kind of not what the consensus is. Um, but yeah. So I, I, don't, I, I don't think that... Uh, even if he wasn't in that situation, I think Anakin sides with Palpatine. Because he's been so manipulated and... Yeah. Yeah, like... The reason Palpatine wants Anakin is because Anakin is so powerful. I think whether Palpatine was throwing the fight against Mace or not, uh, if you have both of them working together, then I don't think Palpatine can beat both of them. Um, mm -hmm. But, I agree. yeah, I... Yep. Okay. Um, so next up we have an email from Auden. Who asks, how goes the best and only Star Wars podcast featuring the two best and only Star Wars podcast hosts? I don't know how to review podcasts, so I'll just send an email instead. No question, just five stars. That's five stars, not a curse word. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yep. Love hearing the comments and reviews. You can send us more than just questions if you want. Uh, we do have a question from, <clears throat> excuse me, question from Garrett who says, I always wondered about how Darth Plagueis being a moon, a mun, uh, would translate to live action. I almost have a somewhat hard time taking them seriously as villains. I can't help but imagine Plagueis selling like Sand Hill, some super important scene with Sidious or Tenebris, so I do vaguely recall him being described as nasally. I'm not sure how it would, uh, how, how it could treat a transpirator. Is not really a grape or nitpick, just something that's odd to think about. Um, and his more general question is, how important do you think the species of a character is to a Star Wars plot? I mean... And then later, he he also mentions that I've heard of Plagueis being mentioned as having been possibly Nemoidian or human in the conceptual stages, and would uh, wonder how the plot and tone of something like that would change with an alter alternative species. I think, for one, I think Munes are kind of creepy. Um, I think the reason why they come off not so well in the prequels is because they are CG, and the CG on things, especially in Episode 3 and Episode 2, is just it is, you know, like it, it, it does stand out a bit. Um, I do think they can make a much better looking creature, especially if he was going to be the star of a movie. I think they would maybe consider making him either partially live action or partially a puppet or something. But I mean, if they could make Snoke look not goofy based on the fact that he is a man in a golden bathrobe and slippers, I think they could probably do it with Plagueis. Yeah. And like as far as the voices go, 
even if you want to take the voices that they have in the prequels as being like a species wide thing, there's still a, a reasonable amount of range there. Like I would almost picture an Alan Rickman esque voice for an evil Mun because yeah. yeah. it, it's a little bit nasally, but it's still like it's it's more the cadence of speech being different. And, and I, I don't think they'd be too locked in by anything like that. As far as the species of a character change in the plot, it, I think there's a few elements that are important for that. Like uh, he gives the example of Thrawn as a Duros or something. Part of the reason Thrawn plays how he does is because he's kind of impenetrable to everyone where Chiss are just so unknown in the galaxy. Uh, whereas Duros, everyone has a bit more experience with Duros. You still get the glowing red eyes. But uh, if you want a Duros Grand Admiral, we still got a very competent one in Mr. Garstasi. So yeah, speaking of legacy, uh, Pal- um, yeah. The important thing with Palpatine too is like looks can be deceiving because yeah. if you watch Episode One, Palpatine is like the goofiest fucking character in the whole movie. Like most of his scenes, you can describe his actions as prancing. Like he prances around. Like if if you're not familiar with the name, because. There were, like, I remember when I was a kid, because I was big into Star Wars when this movie came out, like, people didn't know that Palpatine was uh, the Sith Lord. Now, I knew it because I was familiar with, like, like I had, I don't even know where I would have, I mean, like, we've been reading all of these books, and Palpatine being the Sith Lord was established as early as the original novelization for A New Hope, where Palpatine mm-hmm. is mentioned, or Palpatine is mentioned as the, the senator gone bad. Um, so it's like they did such a good job making him look like a, like a goofy fuck, even though like, even if you're not familiar with it, it's just him with a hood throughout the movie. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> respond to that either. But like the, uh, did, I didn't know that Palpatine was Sidious when I first watched the movie. I don't think I've ever talked about this on the podcast, but like the first time I watched Star Wars, I watched episode one and I had no idea about anything else in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I we watched the the VHS tape at my cousin's house because he had it. And I had no idea how the movies related to each other. I just knew that the uh, original trilogy came out first and that the prequel trilogy came out second but I don't think I knew of it as the prequel trilogy. I just knew it as knew of it as the fourth Star Wars movie. So I saw Anakin Skywalker. I was like, is this Luke Skywalker's kid? Like, what? Who are these people? I'd never seen the original trilogy before. I was just vaguely aware of Darth Vader as some dude with a red stick. So it was all it was all a new experience for me. And I kind of wish I'd gone through with that until episode three and then watched four, five and six just to see what my reaction would have been. But then I also wouldn't have known care. There what was my really there was really a feeling because I was the exact opposite where like I was a huge, huge fan of Star Wars. Like can't remember not being a fan of Star Wars. Um, and like when episode three came out, there definitely was a bit of a feeling like I already know what this movie's going to be. Like my dad was a huge Star Wars fan. He was well, not huge, but he was a big Star Wars fan. And I remember him like he didn't feel like he needed to see episode three when it came out. Cause he's like, I know what happens. Like mm-hmm. he's like, did Anakin turn to Darth Vader? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I figured as much <laughs> <laughs> like, and if you watch the trailer for episode three, like it spoils pretty much the whole movie because there is very little like the specifics. Sure. But we know, like, you know, that Darth Vader, Anakin's going to turn into Darth Vader. You even knew at this point that it was going to be on a lava world where he would be seriously injured you knew somehow that Palpatine was going to turn the Republic into the Empire. Um, but I will say, the hype for Episode 1 before that movie came out was like nothing. I mean, partially because I was a kid, but like... Yeah. I remember when Episode 1 came out, it was like every single like fast food restaurant had like a cool Episode 1 time. Yeah. It's like you went... I remember the KFC ones most vividly for some reason because I think there were so many commercials and there were so many toys and stuff. Um... And I, I think I've told the story on the podcast before, but like that year, anyone my age, and I think I would have been in grade like, came out in 99. So I would have been in like grade one or two. Anyone who had a birthday, we just saw The Phantom Menace. So like I saw it probably like five or six times in theaters, like just from birthday parties. Um, Do you remember the, the Coke cans? 
mm-hmm. where there was like 30 different characters on him. One of my friends yep. collected uh, all of them. And that was before I cared about Star Wars as well. That was literally like the uh, the peak aesthetic, like hum- not just for Star Wars, like just for humanity. Um, yeah. Which looking at like the episode. No, just for for art. KFC Star Wars Episode One. Yeah, so they had like the oh man, all these things. I remember it was always KFC and Pizza Hut too. And yeah. for some reason, oh man, this is all so good. Like even now, as like a thirty year old man, almost like seeing these things that like, it's like I get the same feeling as like when I see like a Game Boy Color. It's just like a there's like some inner child in me that just like is activated and I can't fucking turn that off. For me, that's the uh, the Burger King Pokeballs. You uh, know what? A, pa- a pack of Pokemon cards still does that for me. Like if I see a pack of Pokemon cards in the store, I've got no actual desire to buy them. But like ten year old me is like, you gonna fucking get those, bud? Yeah. <laughs> like I used to have to go to the the Sunday market and like beg my mom for one. And there's one right here at the dollar store, and you're not gonna pick it up. Like there could be a Charizard in there. Yeah, I, like me and Dana will check Toys R Us for board games, and on the way out, there's just the display of Pokemon cards. It's right there. Like, I don't, you have the money oh, for me, it. please. Just, <laughs> oh, I, I don't do that anymore. Well, not to Dana anyway. I want to see tonight. It'll get you drunk enough. Mm, all right, podcast over. All right, guys. Uh, we will be doing a burial card tonight over on X2. Thanks to everyone for watching. Again, just a reminder. Uh, If you're listening to this, make sure you leave a nice review on your podcast platform. I'll check them for next episode. Uh, Make sure you check out the spreadsheet and keep an eye open and an ear open because we are going to be describing how you guys can have your voices heard. Uh, And you guys will be the third reviewer from now on. And yeah, we'll we'll figure some good way to do that. Uh, Starting with, I guess we'll probably start with the, we'll have, we'll figure out some way to do the, the back issues for the previous ones. Yeah. But we'll work that into the re-ranking episode in some way. We'll figure something out whenever that rolls but around. But all the future episodes, we'll find out a way to do it. Uh, that will be easy. Yeah. Basically. So yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.